I remember like 2017, I was really like trying to get mercy me into stores. Somehow I just caught wind there was this store called Addy up north in Lakeland. I remember just pulling up on them and going there. It didn't really seem like much, but I figured maybe we'd get mercy me in there. I remember shortly after that, one day with my girl, just like, babe, call in over there under sales executive and see if we can get Mercy Me in there. And when she called, they just said email. It's like, all right, we didn't hear shit back at all. But I do remember like, just saying, fuck it, and I'm gonna go in there. So I went in there and I met the owner, his name was Assad. He actually complimented my hoodie. It was from the second collection, Derby System. And I followed up, you know, I just asked him, uh, you know, I got a brand out here I want to put in your store. What I got to do? He said that he's not looking for anything right now. I remember mean, he asked me if I was going to Magic. And I was like, yeah, you know, I might check it out. I don't even know what it is, but I might check it out. I went home. I've always been so serious about Mercy that I RSVP. It was in Vegas. I said, fuck it, I booked a flight and left that weekend. There's like 15,000 people there, only four black people. And the only thing I learned was, I ain't nothing like these niggas. My shit was different. When I came back, I wouldn't hear about at ease for another six months. But one day, one day I remember coming across this dude, Aaron Cano's page. And his bio it said brand management, and that he was based in Austin, Texas. So I DM'd him, asking what exactly does he do. He said that he would like to link up. So a few days later, we went. I remember pulling up and at the domain and, and parking and hopping out like, "What up, I'm Royce." He seemed nervous, a little thrown off. Maybe it was my cigar I was smoking. Maybe it was my Range Rover. Maybe it was the suit I was wearing. I was watching Hella Godfather at the time. And I was studying Reginald F. Lewis. Studying billion dollar moves. That day, we pretty much just uh, agreed that we would try to work together. He told me that he worked at At Ease. And he conveyed that he had some power in the building. So, all right, cool. At the time, I was meditating heavy every day on Mercy Me in stores specifically, visualizing that every single day. So cool. This went on for months, conceptualizing ideas, going back and forth, fabrics, thinking like what materials to use, what design. It was like, let's have a meeting at, at ease. So I went, I had the meeting. When I got there, it was Assad and Aaron and another dude working, and they embraced me with a warm welcome. They had a table and chairs in the back. We sat down, the first thing that Assad says is, why the fuck should we work together? <laughs> Honestly, don't even think that he remembered me from six months ago. I told him I'm important to Austin. I'm important to the culture. Not just the culture of Austin, but humanity. I told him that I'm somebody you want to know. I just pretty much let the nigga know that we're of value. And whether it's uh, right now or 10 or 15 years later, you're going to wish that we worked together. I think that echoed through the room and, you know, we ended the convo pretty much agreeing that we'll work together. A few weeks later, after honing in on the idea, after looking at different venue prices for South by Southwest 2018, I get a text from Aaron saying, yo, I'm looking at all of the Mercy stuff. I love the videos, the message. I love all the new products you're putting out. This collaboration is gonna be amazing. Text him right back like, prayer hands. 30 seconds later, he texts me back. Sorry it just doesn't work out for us. Sorry I wasted your time. Sorry I wasted your energy. I said, what? I said, what you mean? 
It's like, it just doesn't work for us. It's just not gonna happen, man. I remember being like, wow. You know, but within a couple of minutes, my girl texted me asking if I wanted to be a vendor in our babysitter's husband event because he's a party promoter for South by Southwest. He was doing an event all day at Clearport on 6th Street on Dirty on the last day of South by the major Saturday. I remember being like, yes, <laughs> all caps. And I just thought it would happen. From that point, I decided I was gonna call him. I called him. A few hours later, I went up to his spot, sat down, and we had a good convo. And we agreed that Mercy Me would have a pop-up at his event. This was like a week out. I remember thinking like, wow. How everything transpired with at ease. Now we're doing this. This is a fucking roller coaster. But we still gonna do this pop-up. Dolo. I remember I contacted our manufacturers and actually got a collection done. I designed it that night. And had a rush delivery in three days. They got it done. We were ready. Victory Lap had just come out. And I was listening to a lot of basses for the first time. Still not even memorized. Or maybe it was one of the first times. And then it said it. See, it's a couple niggas every generation that wasn't supposed to make it out, but they code the matrix. And when they get to speak, it's like a coded language. Reminds niggas of the strength and all the stolen greatness. We used to shoot at niggas at the mobile station. Full circle mogul motivation. My self-educated shrewd negotiations. I remember thinking like, wow. Really a couple of days every generation. So we pulled up to the venue. We actually pulled up right in front and we locked, so we went through the alley and around, around back and actually drove my reins over inside the venue. I remember niggas look, looking like, who the fuck is this? So we hopped out, set up shop, set up our tables, set up our racks, and the day started. For like 10 hours or 11 hours, we saw ebbs and flows of crowds in and out of the venue. Pretty much looking at all of the subpar performances, like this is whack, let's go. But when they would look to their right, everybody that would come in would see us and be mesmerized. It was like this look in their eyes that was magical. Everybody will come up to the booth and ask, is this local? What is this? We would just say, it's Mercy Me. And I would say, I'm Royce. And yeah, we started in Austin. And that would happen every time. Every single time somebody would come up. And every single group that walked in could not look away. We have moved the people. And it was our first time doing anything physical for Mercy Me. It was special. I think the moral of it is the success happened by not giving up. By deciding that we're going to do it anyways, regardless of that ease. And we could do this by ourselves. And we don't need no cosign. That was huge. That was success.